the next uh, discussion, uh, Prof. Ariana Bisharil will deliver the updates from Ledalik. Uh, how we, how we pronounce Ledalik? Am I right to say it? Prof. Ariana, uh, uh, it, is, it is correct. Thank you. Yes, it's correct. Okay. Uh, so I'm here becomes your moderator for the next about 30 to 45 minutes. You can explain uh, anything. Do you have the screen button to share in your screen already? Uh, Prof. Ariana, sure. your yeah. Okay. 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 Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, Prof. Ariana, I won't make it longer. You can start your explanation. I think I have a, a, a low bandwidth uh, in this moment. I turn okay. off my camera. Okay. Maybe it can improve my my presentation. Can you see okay. my screen now? Yes. Your screen is already visible for all of us. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation. Thank you, Arben, and all the people that are... Uh, allow me to share our work and and to give me this opportunity it's really a privilege for uh, for me uh, to have this opportunity to to share our work what we are doing um from the latin american region now um opening our scope to uh, many other countries and i would like to take uh well this opportunity to start by explaining in in a couple of minutes uh, our approach in the sense that uh, why we are doing that uh, the, the job that we are doing with journals because we believe that open science in general and particularly open uh, access is the perfect opportunity to achieve science as a global public good so we are a, our aim is to strengthen um, scientific journals uh, worldwide uh, that are uh, scientific or academic led and academic owned and that can provide this opportunity to um, enable the participation of, of everybody uh, without uh, uh, paywalls or without any other restrictions so we believe that uh, open science it is a perfect opportunity to achieve that. However, we believe that we live in a world of contrast uh, because uh, many um, many scientific uh, communication channels are driven or are uh, managed more as a commodity instead of uh, as a public good. In this sense, we believe that uh, countries, especially uh, developing countries like like my country, we are based in Mexico. Um, we have, of course, a lot of restrictions in terms of uh, economic uh, economic resources. So, when we have science that is uh, uh, communicated and interchange or exchange as a commodity or commercial commodity, we believe that we are excluding. Uh, people and uh, and we are restricting the participation of many in the scientific conversation of science. So we are living in an increasing control of the knowledge production by commercial and big uh, commercial publishers. We have uh, seen that we have now more restrictions on, for example, where, when, or how to deposit the scientific outputs that are being generated in universities and well in, in academic institutions we are also seeing that um, a, a publishing transition to digital technology to technologies is both slow and many in many cases disappointing in, in a region as well and we are also seeing that uh, we are living as researchers i am a researcher as well in the autonomous university of the state of mexico we see that we are living in a very complex and damaging research assessment system 
that privileges the, the industry of prestige that see journals sometimes as as brands instead of a uh, vehicles of uh, of communication between peers and between um, non-specialized readers as well. So uh, our approach is to 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 go beyond transformative agreement, which is a strategy that um, have uh, been created by the commercial sector in order to to achieve open access in some parts of the world. Uh, for us uh, to go, uh, for example, through the APC to sustain journals is not the best way because we are kind of repeating the the historical errors uh, that subscription taught us in, uh, and that we learned from the subscription crisis uh, various decades, decades ago. So with, for example, transformative agreements and APC-based journals, we see once again that less source researchers are that countries, academic institutions, and the research community do not have any control in commercial agreements. And perhaps the most important, the ownership determines the future of openness and future restrictions. So uh, for us, equity must be in the discussion when we try to achieve open access and open science. In order to um, to achieve equity, we need to see how we can really uh, be in control of future decisions about uh, scientific publishing. So investment in non-commercial open access publishing is important to, to try to achieve science as a global public good and to uh, maximize the participation in science and in publishing without restrictions or at least economic restrictions with immediate open access with no apc with multilingualism uh, that can be privileged by these kind of approaches so in latin america we live in an ecosystem that is composed by thousands of uh, diamond open access journals which are being published by hundreds of academic institutes institutions and sustained collectively also with public money, uh, uh, money coming also from governments. And this layer, let's say, of journals that are being uh, distributed along the region, across the region, is being um, enhanced by different open open infra infrastructures that um, that complement the capabilities of their journals. So in this sense, we have Latinx, we have uh, Redalic, we have La Referencia, we have Cielo, using, as uh, John mentioned before, uh, for example, a open source software like OJS, of course, but also using academic faculty to um, to run the journals and to sustain the journals. So the editorial sector is led and controlled and owned by the academic institutions. There are no fees, neither for authors nor for readers. And this is a non-profit sector that is being uh, prevailing in Latin America. So it is important to highlight that uh, some of the lessons learned uh, from the, the global north is that we that they are moving from readership paywalls to authorship paywalls. And the commercial sector is being strengthened now and, and consolidated now through the APCs. We don't believe in APCs because we are now uh, seeing that, uh, uh, that we have an inflationary APC market and that sometimes a researcher needs to pay more than $10,000 to publish in a journal, which is out of sense for a researchers, uh, researcher uh, of a developing country. It, it, it is uh, uh, sometimes uh, equal to one year of salary of, of a researcher. So uh, when we see these two approaches, and it is not as simple as this, but this is just to, uh, to explain uh, um, uh, uh, the differences or the main differences of uh, the different approaches. So we believe more in what Budapest, the Budapest Open Access Initiative in its 20th anniversary said that open access is not an end in itself, but a means to further ends. So it is a means to the equity, quality, usability, and sustainability of research. And in this sense, I think we are also working in line with the UNESCO recommendation on open science 
And I really like the part of that recommendation where it says that uh, the construction, that open science is a construct. So uh, our approach uh, in order to be uh, successful needs to have some deconstruction of some concepts. Uh, for example, what is mainstream, mainstream science versus perif peripheral science? We have suffered in a region that the science that is being generated in Latin America has been called peripheral or non-mainstream. And this is not correct because it depends on which channel, well, which is mainstream cha uh, cha uh, channel where the science is being circulated. And in that sense, uh, we need to deconstruct, we should value science beyond the industry of prestige. We need to go back to the essence and values of science as a global enterprise and uh, address the root of the problem that is the commodification, the ownership and control. So uh, in that sense, we develop this infrastructure for advancing a uh, diamond open access publishing. This is a kind of new name for this um, model of open access that don't charge authors nor readers. And where Red League started 20 years ago as an Ibero-American open access uh, due to the evolution of open access worldwide. In 2018, we opened our uh, scope to index journals, not only from the Latin American region, but uh, from in any other country it, it seems, uh, or, or once they have passed the selection criteria of Red League. And that with the condition, a mandatory condition that don't charge, of course, authors and uh, don't charge readers. Today, we have um, a more than 1,500 journals in our platform. We uh, provide the service of hosting the full text of each article. We have almost 1 million articles in full text in our uh, in our database. You can see in the picture above, in the map above, the, the articles that are coming from more than 150 countries that have uh, published one article in the Jonas Index by Red League. And uh, um, in, in the map below, you can see the, the, the coverage of journals around the world. We have journals from 31 countries and authors from a, more than 150 countries. And our approach is aimed to add value and secure quality, visibility, and discoverability of journal publishing. So once a journal is being indexed for the league, uh, the, the journal is provided by different tools and different ways to improve the journal production workflow, but also uh, it provides certification, it provides tools for interoperability and discoverability of their content, it provides uh, metrics and the statistics and different ways to, to trace this activity uh, uh, that is being performed on the web. So this is our architecture of services. We have a layer that is um, that aims to select quality to select quality journals and to uh, it is based on a quality criteria with also an advisory board which is external and composed of different um, researchers in different areas and uh, from different countries so they can uh, provide a qualitative uh, view of a journal uh, which is uh, integrated in a quantitative um, algorithm and then we provide this uh, certification of quality and we index the journal. In that, in that layer, we provide also training, uh, continuous training for journal editors in order to improve the quality of the journal. We provide also an, a, a report on the evaluation of this criteria in order uh, to, to let the the editor know about the areas of opportunity and uh, what we see from Red League that can be improved within the journal. Then once it's indexed, we provide different uh, uh, systems and tools for editorial workflow and digital production. In that sense, we provide um, a system for markup in XML JATS, uh, which is uh, called Markalik. 
And this technology allow journals to have uh, these uh, versions of XML in, in JATS, in the standard JATS. But from then, um, automatically, it generates the EPUB versions and also the, H the HTML and PDF. All this technology is free to use for the journals we index. And uh, the journals can use it to generate all the uh, electronic formats. Um, and also, it's very important that, that uh, for you to know that we use artificial intelligence algorithms to automate the majority of the process. So in that sense, the, the work doing this job by um, a marking or tagging the XML chats of each article is um, it is not time consuming. And we have the user which um, who needs uh, to be part of the editorial team, but not necessarily a technically expert in, in technology to do this job because this algorithm do the job in the, uh, well, the majority of the process, it's automatic. And from that, we, with a couple of clicks, you can have the PDF and the HTML and also a desk, desktop uh, viewer and a mobile viewer for each article. That the, all those files can be downloaded from Markalik and can be also uh, integrated into the websites uh, that are built in OJS, for example, so they can be in that in in the journal uh, website as well. Uh, uh, apart from this technology, we provide also different uh, full text retrieval services in terms of search engines, search filters. Uh, we have a full text index, and we have different tools for browsing uh, by discipline, by country, by institution, by journal. All these um, uh, file files that are being also hosted in the Redalic platform. We provide also interoperability and visibility tools. We provide a channel for OAA, the protocol for metadata harvesting for each journal, so they can disseminate broadly the content uh, across the web. We have also interaction with content aggregator repositories, search engines, for example, uh, well, different search engines and directories, and also repositories at institutional and, and country level to integrate and to um, harvest the content and to populate, for example, repositories with the, with the articles that are hosted in Redalic, also with libraries, which is a very important service that we have for free as well, to have uh, the possibility to embed search engines into the, uh, the discoverability solutions in libraries. Uh, uh, so libraries can be also uh, with the opportunity to search uh, within the content. And we also provide metrics in usage and metrics for scientific productions for uh, country institutions and, and journals itself. So in this collaborative work with journal editors, with institutions, and with the technology that we provide and services, we have um, achieved uh, and we have lowered the cost of journal production. So one of our goals is to maintain or to preserve the non-commercial nature of many journals and uh, to prevent the adoption of the IPC model, which is very difficult. We are struggling to really preserve that model, but it's very difficult because it's being adopted uh, at a very accelerated uh, speed in many, many regions. We believe that the green open access and diamond open access can complement each other in order to build an ecosystem for science as a, as a, as a common and, and public good. So we interact, for example, with La Referencia, which is uh, the network of repositories in Latin America uh, in, in difference uh, uh, with technology to interoperate, but also to, to develop metrics and also to have, uh, for example, uh, we have a project to build um, uh, this system for research evaluation. Uh, and the idea is to produce and generate technology that can be seen as a public good. Uh, and in that sense, uh, we have also this 
uh, developments that we can provide these collections, semantic collections, we call it like that because we use semantic technologies to also provide these collections of articles that are being grouped by the sustainable development goals. We use, uh, for example, our DF, which is translated from the XML JATS, and we use also ontologies and different semantic technologies in order to reorganize the knowledge that has been published in the journals. But when uh, they, the content is integrated with other content uh, coming from other journals, and then we can organize this content again, and we can provide these services to enhance and to to give a richer view of what uh, the what is being published in in journals. And, and uh, finally, we have. I just want to mention that we have now uh, been working very closely with Africa, when particularly with Angola, uh, for example, to develop uh, or, or to propose a roadmap for a national law for uh, open access as a common good. Uh, we have been working with UNESCO for almost five years with um, within the Latin American region, but also with Angola. And now we are starting to do the, the same with South Africa. Uh, so one of the perhaps takeaways from um, from this presentation is that well, in Latin America, we have a strong and cohesive and vibrant sector of academic diamond open access publishing, uh, where many stakeholders participate uh, among journals, governments, repositories, institutions, open infrastructures, libraries, national and regional networks. And it's been for decades, it's been naturally open, naturally uh, open for authors and for readers. And it is... Um, but the support to Diamond Open Access, it's important because, because it brings health to the scholarly communication system and to, oh, by the way, by the, to the commercial market because it can act as a market force in order to balance uh, the different alternatives uh, that a researcher could have to uh, in, in order to communicate uh, its findings. So Diamond Open Access could add act as a market force in regions with high dependence on LPC-based or subscription-based journals because it also acts as a natural regulator for commercial market uh, regulating prices and also regulating ol oligopolies. Uh, in other regions, Diamond Open Access is less consolidated. We are aware of that and it's even deserves and it, it is based in voluntary work work, but it is not the case in Latin America. It's very consolidated. It's uh, the level of, um, it's very mature. Uh, there are uh, even new generations of researchers, new generations of journal editorial teams are involved in sustaining this model in Latin America, but it's in high risk of uh, uh, weeks and also in high risk of uh, well, it start losing these benefits because of the adoption of commercial strategies to to make it sustainable. So we are we are in a big in a big risk in in that sense. There are different dimensions for for adv advancing this approach. Uh, uh, from our perspective, we need to innovate. We we need to keep developing technology that can be shared and that can. Uh, impact in sustainability of, of journals and the communication of science that can uh, also lower the costs of scientific production that can help in improve the quality as well. Uh, we need to, to have also a ways to, um, to go or to advance multilingualism and to advance research assessment worldwide because it's one of the big um, uh, the big uh, negative uh, uh, forces that are impacting in the uh, advance or development of diamond open access worldwide. So uh, just to end my presentation, uh, uh, for, for us, uh, libraries, governments, open infrastructures, institutions, funders, and the research community, authors, uh, we all have a role to, to really uh, help Diamond or to give Diamond the opportunity to uh, not only to succeed, but in some cases to survive. 
the we need to think that we need also these these um, venues of publication where uh, where nobody can be restricted or prevented to participate because of the lack of resources. So we need to to work in that sense. That 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 is uh, mainly the the goal the goal of of Redalic to provide this infrastructure to help journals which are not commercial to preserve but to be of quality and to be visible and to be uh, discovered by the research community uh, but we also need help to to give them um, the prestige and recognition of the contribution that journals are already uh, doing for the communication of science so it is possible to have quality publishing on a not for profit basis and in a collective approach for the benefit of all this is something that we have that it has been uh, done in latin america very well for many years but now we are really very worried about what how is the ecosystem evolving and how is being um diminished uh, the the benefit for all and also adopting some other strategies that are not exactly um in in the in the way that we have been working before the transformation to open also presents an opportunity to reimagine scholarly communication we believe in that and to return to the essence of, of science that favors epistemic justice methodological linguistic geographic and content diversity and also to rectify some of the existing biases and inequalities uh, that are current in the system so a future where diamond and green uh, have mm, so much to contribute and here i have i end my presentation i would be happy to to answer any questions you may have Th thank you very much thank you prof ariana for the explanation about the red uh, I have already several questions in the Q and A. Uh, is it visible in your screen the Q and A? Would you like to choose uh, what questions that you want to answer in a Q and A button? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. So. From, for example, from here we can see the questions for uh, from Mr. Multazam. What yes. is the daily goal? Uh, do you, can you see the questions in a Q and A there? Are the daily yes, I can, uh, I can yeah, see them. Okay. As dissemination yeah, support ask. for journals or intend to be platform that can be archive of a journal article such as Portico or Locks, and how about the development of the platform? Yes, yes. Okay, so please, you can directly answer this. Sure. Uh, becomes our discussion today. Sure, of course. Thank you for the question uh, that gives me the opportunity to clarify uh, that the Redalix goal is to provide an infrastructure that supports different um different activities of the journal it can it is not only for preservation services to host the content but also uh, we provide services for dissemination for discoverability services metrics and also the technologies for the generation of xml jats and the the journal uh, electronic production so uh, the journal can lower their cost of production because they are uh, using this technology that minimize the resources that can that need to be invested in order to produce a journal to produce the pdf html but it also provides the, the different file formats like epov uh, based on this structured data so this is um well uh, in general but uh, is the, the the mission of redalic Okay, uh, how about the next one? Uh, the development of the platform and increased storage needed in the future. Uh, what would Redalic do to make this platform sustain? Okay, um, 
Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, uh, we have been also, uh, well, nowadays struggling with high demand of uh, 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 from the journals to be indexed in Redalic. Uh, this demand and this uh, expansion led us to reorganize our uh, our team even internally our processes but also to expand our community of um uh, people that is working uh, with redalic in this model of cooperation we have also need to secure the sustainability of the platform and now we have being participated in interna with international uh, grants, with international projects that uh, are helping us to sustain the technical infrastructure to meet the demand that we are currently having. And we are also participating, for example, in the SCOS campaign, and we also develop a membership model for the ones that are interested in be part of the uh, of the Redalic infrastructure in terms of participating more actively in the sustainability, but also in the governance of the infrastructure to help us uh, to select journals, to provide a quality view of the journal selection, and also to take on the decision uh, decision making processes within Redalic in order to make Redalic an open infrastructure. Uh, Redalic, and I forgot to mention, started and it's been sustained mainly by the Autonomous University of the State of Mexico. Actually, I am a professor in the Autonomous University of the State of Mexico. It's been it's mainly sustained by this university, which is a public university in Mexico. But it uh, have it uh, right now has cooperation with more than seven hundred institutions around the world that uh, help us to, for example, uh, help journals in the markup, for example, us in training locally in different countries and uh, allow us to, to continue our work by, uh, based on this uh, model of cooperation. Okay. I think uh, those all three are the questions uh, from the audience. Yeah, let me check one more time. Yeah, the other questions. Uh, I think uh, your explanation about the redalic works are already clear enough. Do you have a closing statement, Prof. Ariana, to close our discussions uh, between RGAI and redalic? Could you hear my voice clearly? Yes, I have a little okay. delay because of my connection, but oh, yes, okay. thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yes, okay. uh, of course, I we would like to um, offer and with, with the goodwill that we are working with, we are, as I said, professor de professors developing technology and based in a public university, offering these tools to any journal that, that uh, needs to be more sustainable and need to have more visibility in other parts of the world. So we are here to help. Services are for free. These services are, well, the, the journal needs to, of course, be or approve the selection criteria in order to be indexed, but uh, all this technology is for free. And also it's important uh, for us that uh, the, um, these search engines can be used in other parts of the world that can uh, that that all researchers and students uh, can take advantage of these open resources that are of quality and that are uh, which is science that is uh, free for read for readers and that are on also that can have uh, or that can uh, query our research uh, our search engines in order to see which journals you can publish in if you are a researcher for example so it is also a, an important tool for selecting a journal that uh, want church uh, authors to publish in thank you prof ariana for uh, sharing about rhetoric and their movement and goals and everything's there. Uh, we are really pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much for discuss with us. Thank you so much.
Yes, uh, Ariani, I just want to say a big thank you for joining us in the webinar today. Your input was incredible, valuable, and very really grateful for the time you spent with us today. Thank you, Ariana. Thank, thank you. you. It's an honor for me to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you.